and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and this is my channel where I share all about my making adventures. Today I just have knitting to share with you. Um, I do have a couple of works in progress, a couple of finished objects as well, and some things that arrived in the mail. We've got Summer Sock Camp talk. We're going to talk about the Summer Sock Camp make-along. So it's going to be a pretty full episode. I hope you are ready. You've got something to work on. Maybe you've got a cup of coffee or something to drink and you're ready to catch up. So let's start out with where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. I will have links right down below this video. If you look, I think it's below the title of the video, hit more, we'll pull down the description box. You'll find links to everywhere that you can find me, um, as well as show notes for this episode, which will include links to Ravelry project pages, which have all the details on everything I'm going to show. And also sh any shops that I talk about will be linked right down there. Today is Thursday, April 18th. It is 8.33 a.m. and this is episode 226. So like I said, we're going to talk summer sock camp and I think we're just going to go ahead and talk about that right now. I've been trying to remember everything that I want to talk about. I'm going to pull up the post I made on Instagram so that hopefully I don't forget anything. <laughs> so I did make a post yesterday about Summer Sock Camp on Instagram. It has all the details for the make along, but we're going to go over those here and then they will also be up in Ravelry in the Ravelry group, which you can find a link for down below this video. Um, I'm debating. I may go ahead and open up the chatter thread because I know everybody is so excited, which has me so excited. <laughs> I mean, I was already excited, but seeing everybody's excitement makes me even more excited um, about Summer Sock Camp. So maybe I'll go ahead and open that up today and make a note for that. But let's start, before I get too ahead of myself, let's just start with the basics here. If you are new and you're like, what is Summer Sock Camp? Summer Sock Camp is just a sock make-along. Uh, it has the name Summer Sock Camp makes it sound like I think people get confused and they think they have to pay or sign up or it's in person or maybe an online event. It is just a sock make along. You can knit socks, you can crochet socks. Uh, there are no loom or machine socks allowed. It's always just been knit or crochet, but you can just do that and participate. You don't have to enter for prizes, but there are prizes available. I will draw throughout the summer for prizes. Um, but just to reiterate, because I do always have questions, you do not have to sign up. You do not have to pay none of that. It is just a make along. I love bringing everybody together. It just like one of my favorite things is bringing people together through knitting, crocheting, any type of making and getting to do that with this make along. We've been doing this since 2020. Um, it just, it just makes me so happy. It's just my favorite thing. So it is just a make along. Um, in years past, I kind of did Summer Sock Camp in 2020 while launching sock tutorials here on the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube. So that was the first year and it started that way. And all those tutorials are still here free on YouTube. They'll always be here and free on YouTube for you to help you along in your, help you along in your sock knitting journey. Um, but yes, those are all there. One of my other favorite things about Summer Sock Camp is people coming in and learning to knit socks for the new for the first time, trying a new technique. Um, it just it's just a great way to come together with other people who love to make socks or join in for the first time with making socks. Um, it's really enjoyable. So how can you participate if if you are just wanting to participate? you are not, you're like, I don't really enter for prizes. I just want to participate. Just join in and make socks. Um, you can participate in the chatter thread in the Ravelry group. There will be a chatter and an FO thread. The chatter thread is just to chat along. Uh, if you need some help with sock knitting, you can post there or you can always email me. I always try to help make myself available via email all the time. Um, but my email is always listed below the video. So I'm always happy to try to help. I don't always know the answers, <laughs> but I'm always happy to try to help. Um, or you can use the hashtag on Instagram. The hashtag is Summer Sock Camp 2024. So you can participate in either of those places, whether it's just you're participating to participate and knit with people um, or crochet with people, 
or you are doing for prizes, prize wise, you can use the hashtag on Instagram. I will draw from prizes just from any post on there, not just from finished object posts. For finished socks, you can enter those into the Ravelry finished object thread. And I'll probably draw from the chatter thread as well over there um, in Ravelry, but specifically if you're wanting to enter a finished pair of socks, that's one entry, and you can do that in the finished object thread, and that's another way you can enter for prizes over there. You can do all of the things to enter for prizes, or you can just post in one place. You don't have to knit a certain amount of socks. You can knit one or you can knit 50. If you knit 50, you just get to enter each pair of socks as an entry. Let's see, let me look at my post here because I know I'm gonna forget something. Works in progress are allowed. So if you have 20 projects, sock projects on the go right now, you finish those up, you can enter all of them as long as they are a pair of socks. You can do any size socks. I don't care what size it is, any size, shorties, long legs, kids, adult, I don't care, any size socks. Any weight of yarn, I don't care about that either, worsted, DK, fingering, any pattern, any pattern works, or just your sock recipe, a vanilla sock, whatever you wanna do. And it's open to everyone worldwide. I know it's not summer everywhere, but it'll be summer here. That's how the name came about. <laughs> So it does not matter if it is summer where you are, you can participate. I I think that's it. Um, the logo, we do have a logo. I've done a logo every year and we'll talk more about like different things with the logo in just a moment, but we do have a logo. I will put it up here, Savannah of Monster Knits. Just how amazing is this logo? It takes me back to like New Kids on the Block and Saved by the Bell and all of those amazing things. And somebody said it reminds them of like a 90s Taco Bell, which made me laugh. I loved that. And it got me craving Taco Bell so bad. That's what we had for dinner last night. <laughs> Taco Bell is like my, hands down, my favorite fast food restaurant ever. Just a fun little fact there. So I love the logo. This year it will be up in the Spreadshirt shop again. It is right now up in the Spreadshirt shop. So I will have a link that's always linked down below. There's other crazy sock lady merchandise available over there. Um, but I have that up there and I had requests for previous year's logo. So I have every year, but 2020, 2020, I cannot get the file to work, um, to download onto there. So, and the person that created it, I don't even know if they still have an Instagram or they still do anything like that. So I'm not sure, but every year, except for 2020, is up on there because I had people say they wanted to order some of the Spreadshirt stuff with one of the old logos. So they are all up there for you. Um, as far as items with the logo or exclusive items, I didn't do those last year and I'm not doing them again this year. Um, there are just like a, a, so many reasons. I do not wanna do exclusive items anymore, but it just boils down to the fact that I don't wanna do it and we're not gonna do it. <laughs> I did ask on Instagram yesterday for any shops. If you have a shop or you know of a shop that has 80s, 90s themed yarn, bags, progress keepers, anything that we might need for our knitting or crocheting, please email me and let me know whether it's your shop or someone else's shop that you want to share with me. I'm going to put together a list. I'm, I'll am i have details on that more next week. I might post it before next week's episode over on Instagram. So if you're not following me there, that's a great way to keep up to date on things. Um, but I will put together a list of shops that have 80s, 90s themed items and add to it as more become known to me or sent to me or I find them, whatever the case may be. So if you want to share that, send that to me via email, send me a link for the shop or the items or whatever it is. And I will get those added to the list. And like I said, I'll share where that list is, where you can find it probably on Instagram um, before next week, but I will definitely let y'all know next week too. Let's see. <laughs> what else? I always feel like there's so much and I always feel like I, I give all the details, but then there's, I always end up forgetting something. Start date this year will be May 24th. That is a Friday. 
Yes, that's a Friday. That's the last day of school for my kids and it's the Friday before Memorial Day. I've started to kind of like starting it around Memorial Day because that just feels like the start of summer to me and it just like always ends up lining up with the end of school pretty much for my kids um, for where we live. So yeah, May 24th is the start date but works in progress are allowed so keep that in mind. Um, and then it ends August 31st so it runs all summer long. All right, do we have anything else? I'm looking at this post. Um, I think that's it. I'm sure there will be questions, that something that I've forgotten or something. So you can always comment down below. I try to go through and read all of the comments and answer questions as I can. Or like I've, I've said, I feel like a lot of times in this, this episode so far, you can always reach me via my email address, which is always down below the video in the description box. Let's take a, a sip of coffee. I have got my Midwest Stitches mug today. This is from hers. Yeah, it was a Spreadshirt shop, her Spreadshirt shop. <laughs> I love this mug. All right. I think that's, that's all we have for Summer Suck Camp admin things. I'm very excited about it. I'm already thinking about what yarns I want to use. I'm for sure y'all going to end up buying some yarns. <laughs> I, there have been so many sent to me already. I've had a chance to glance at a few as far as like ones that have been, uh, websites that have been sent to me, not like yarn sent to me, websites that have been sent to me with 80s, 90s themed items. And I'm already like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm also really going to try to pull from stash. I have, this is ridiculous. I have yarn sitting over here that I caked up for summer sock camp last year and then never worked with. So I definitely, that's a goal. I really want to try to knit these yarns that are already caked up. Um, as many of them as I can in summer sock camp. Then I know I have some like bright, neon -y, fun colors that are like the colors in the logo. I can see some right there and I'm sure there's some back here. So we will see. <laughs> <laughs> what ends up happening, but I feel like there's going to be some yarn coming in. I also have a color here that I feel like would work really well. We'll get to that in mail. I feel like it would look really good for this. And you obviously, I already said, but I want to make sure I reiterate because I think people got confused yesterday when I was saying I was going to share shops and work with the 80s, 90s colors over on Instagram. You can use any yarn. It does not have to be 80s, 90s themed or anything like that. Any yarn. You don't have to buy new yarn. You can use your stash yarn, scraps, any yarn. But all right, let's talk finished objects. Let's let's dive in with what I have been up to. So I have finished two pairs of socks. Um, I finished the scrappy socks that I was working on. These were scraps that my friend... Jenny sent me um, all but the heel and then a little bit of the toe, but we'll go through that in a minute. So for these, I did just my vanilla socks pattern. I did them on nine inch. So I did a US zero two millimeter because um, I always go down a needle size for nine inch because my gauge changes. It gets looser. My stitches get bigger. So 10 rounds per color is what I did. I did knit two, purl two for the cuff for 20 rounds, so 10 rounds per color, and then 10 rounds all the way down until the toe. And I used every single mini that she sent me. It worked out perfect. So for the heel, I did use Three by the Sea Serene, and then for the little bit at the toe. When I had finished 10 rounds with that last mini, I was like, maybe I could keep going and squeeze out the rest of the toe on both with the uh, mini, but I thought, no, we did the heel in a different color, so let's do this. So this was the Knit Picks, or Knit Picks. <laughs> Why did I even just say Knit Picks? The three by the C serene color for heel and a little bit at the toe. Um, but other than that, it was all the scraps that my friend Jenny sent. And these were pair number 25 for the year. I started them on April 7th, and I finished them on April 12th. I had so much fun with these. For my ends, I had a lot of questions about how I handle ends on scrappy socks. I'm not really ever bothered by weaving in ends. Is it like super fun? No, but it's part of the process. Um, so I just finish a sock, weave in the ends. Start the second sock, finish that sock, weave in the ends. I don't let them linger because that would be terrible as far as like, would I ever go back and finish it? 
uh, maybe, but if I just get them done, then they're done. So weaving in ends, I just did the, the traditional way that I always do. I mean, I sometimes I'll weave them in as I go, but traditional way, no problem with that. So you can see where they are woven right there. And I do have a tutorial for how I weave them in this way here on my YouTube. Um, so you can find that in the tutorial playlist. I also finished, were these a work in progress last time? Oh gosh, sorry if that was loud. Decided to take these off the blocker. <laughs> All right, let's see, were those, I think they were a work in progress. Yes, so I finished the DK weight socks. I did fingering weight held double for this. This yarn was uh, Fuse Fiber Studio, which I do not believe is in business any longer. It was their shelter collar. And I have, I think, four total skeins of this, but I used two of those and held both of the cakes together to get about a DK weight gauge. For that, I follow my DK weight vanilla sock pattern, which is a free download that's available on Ravelry. I use a US 3, 3.25 millimeter, and I did 10 rounds of Knit 2 Pearl 2 for the cuff. This color, does it never looks color accurate, I feel like. Um, in some lighting it does. This lighting, it's not looking very color accurate. <laughs> but I did, anyways, 10 rounds Knit 2 Pearl 2 for the cuff, 30 rounds for the leg, has a slip stitch heel flap and toe. Same with all of my, my socks that you're going to see today. These were pair 26 for the year. I started them on April 8th and I finished them on April 14th. So two more finished pairs of socks. Socks have been, I mean, obviously they're kind of always my go-to, but definitely lately with, um, with the puppy. <laughs> it's so easy to just pick socks up and work on them at any time. All right, I have four works in progress that I'm gonna show you. First, let's talk about Wyatt's sweater. It's in a bag that was sent to me by JM Yarn and Crafts. Oh my gosh, if I would've just dropped this bag, it's pretty heavy. I've got a lot in here. Uh, she sent this to me because she thought it would be perfect for Wyatt's sweater. So this is the Sovin sweater by Megan Babin. I need to add more yarn in here. I'm using Knit Picks Swish Worsted in Pinecone Heather. And I've been doing fairly good about four rows a day. There's been a few days where I've not been able to do that, but overall been doing four rows a day. See my progress keeper there from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. That's marking where I was last week for the regular episode. See, I've done a lot of decreases here, working on the yoke shaping. This is the back piece. I've just got my cable needle tucked in there in case anyone's curious. <laughs> it's just tucked into the stitches so I don't lose it. So let's go ahead and move this up. Still enjoying it. I mean, just nothing really to say about it other than to show the progress that was made in a week. So I... I have no idea actually how many, I was gonna say, I feel like I might be done with this piece by next week, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. I can't remember how many, like how much more I have to do in that area. I know there's a lot of decreasing coming up. Ooh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the yarn to put in here. Otherwise I'm gonna forget. <laughs> I've got it just sitting over here in a basket. Um, just the rest of the yarn. So I wanna go ahead and tuck that in there. I'm almost done with that one. All right, next, I'll show you my progress on my fingering weight jelly roll blanket. This is a bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. And I want to clarify that I had a lot of people say, last week I was looking for the marker, the progress keeper on here. And a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, there was one. It's on there, you just didn't see it. I should have said last week because I saw that one, but that's not the one I was looking for. <laughs> so I'll show you the markers. Um, but the one that was on there last week is for, I, mar I put that one in to mark where I was on the blanket when I pulled it out of like its little hibernation it had been in. 
And I was looking for the one that marked a week of progress and I had not put that one in, but this let's show it and then I'll talk about the pattern and everything. But here's the one that was there last week. This is marking where it was when I pulled it out of hibernation. So here's where I'm at right now. This I put in last week. This is where I was last week. So this is the one I was looking for just a week progress and I had neglected to place a marker to show that. But this is where I was last Thursday when I recorded. And I got all that done. So I did pretty good. I've been getting into a different routine. You know, my routine has changed um, with the addition of the pup because I'm like her sole, sole caretaker. <laughs> so in the morning I get up with her um, and the other dogs end up getting up too because she, she wakes everyone up. <laughs> but I get up with her, get all the dogs fed, situated, out, all the things. And then I sit down and do, um, I'm doing the Bible recap on the Bible app, um, which is just reading the Bible in a year. So I sit down, I do that uh, while I work on this for a little bit. So that's been a good routine to get me in. And then I'll usually end up watching the news for a little bit. So some mornings I get 30 minutes, some mornings I get 45. It just depends on the morning and what the dogs are doing pretty much. <laughs> How wild are the dogs? <laughs> But it's allowed me to feel like get back into a good routine with this and make some progress. So that pattern, if you are new here and you don't know, is the Jelly Roll Blanket by Kay Jones. Um, some people think when I say Kay that I mean me. This is not a pattern by me. That is by Kay Jones. And I have changes, modifications, because I've made quite a few. Those are all listed on my Ravelry project page. I've had some people ask if I'll do a tutorial. I will not be doing a tutorial um, for that. I just have my notes for my changes over there. Now socks. <laughs> I have two sock projects. I think these are both new cast-ons. Yes, they are both new cast-ons. So this one is in a bag from Mountain State Stitches. And this is the April Yarnable colorway. Oh, and I've totally, I did not post on Instagram. I'm not even sure if they're still open, but I did see that Yarnable is open to new subscribers. So Yarnable is a yarn subscription service. I've shared, I share every month for years. <laughs> my Yarnable box. I love it so much, but they are a yarn subscription service and they are usually only open like a handful of times a year to new people. So you want to head over, um, use the code sock lady. It'll get you $5 off your first box. If they happen to not be open, you can just put your email in and they will let you know when spots become available. But yes, this is the April Yarnable colorway. Life is short. Eat the donut is the name of it. Here is the yarn, has the most delicate speckles. So fun. I have one sock done. So for this, I decided to do my Whispers in the Wind sock pattern. It looks good in so many different yarns, um, but I love how it looks in a lightly speckled or a solid or tonal kind of yarn. I think it really pulls the color out. So I have decided, I decided to knit that. Here it is on the side. It's only on the front of the sock. I have a donut progress keeper. I have no clue where that came from. The gnome knitter maybe, but I don't think her shop is open anymore. So here's the pattern. It does, I did the, followed it exactly, did the cuff in pattern. It is a in pattern cuff. And there's the front of the sock. It is so fun. I've had people say they're intimidated by how this looks, but really do not be. It is the most simple pattern. There is one row that has the crossed stitch here, but I have a tutorial. It's not something you need a cable needle for or anything like that. I have a video tutorial linked in the pattern that walks you through how to do that. Um, such a simple pattern to do. Other than that, it's just knits, pearls, there's some slips, there's the cross. So easy. 
I have the second sock started. I finished this one yesterday, started the second sock. I'm on the cuff. I'm doing it magic loop on US 1 2.25 millimeter chow goo needle. And that'll probably be done, I would say, by next next episode. Oh, and there is a discount code for that pattern. If you want to get the Whispers in the Wind sock, use the code WITH20. WITH20. All caps. I don't know if the all caps matters, but I know when I put the code in, it was all caps. <laughs> so WITH20 will get you 20% off. That's on Etsy and Ravelry. That is project number one or sock number one. I have one more. This one's in a bag. Did I show this last week or the week before? From Barley Pearls, the guitar pick bag that they sent me, which lets you know this is a sock project for Wyatt. <laughs> I am using some yarn that I had caked up, so I'm, I'm doing that. <laughs> it is Leap of Faith Yarns. And it is their Spark color. If I'm not mis this might have been a summer sock camp color in previous years, the year before last, maybe, but I have a terrible memory, so I could be wrong about that. There's the cake of yarn. This has been caked up at least since last summer sock camp, maybe even before that. I decided to do a all over ribbed sock. It'll be ribbed front and back of the leg and then the top of the foot. Look how fun that looks. Oh, I love it. And I love a ribbed sock. I've never done an all over ribbed for Wyatt, at least not in since this time that I've started making him socks since he started wearing them again. Maybe I did previously and I just don't remember. But for this, I'm using a nine inch circular. So I'm using US zero, two millimeter, nine inch chow goo needles. And I'm doing my vanilla socks pattern, the counts from that. I'm just doing knit to purl to ribbing uh, all around right now for the leg. And it looks so small, but ribbing just stretches so much and it gives you such a good fitting sock. It is so nice. And then when I get to the foot, I'll just do knit to purl to on the first half of the stitches. So the top of the sock. I think that's it for those. I do have some things that arrived in the mail. I have something that I ordered. I'll go ahead and show that. This is from 3 by the Sea Designs. I was able to resist this in their first go round of this colorway. The second time I could not resist. This is their Tea and Wonderland sock set. This is the one that I said I feel like will be good for like thinking an 80s, 90s theme. It's obviously an Alice in Wonderland theme, but the colors, they're getting so blown out because they are so bright and so fun. Um, and then paired with that black, it's perfect. So this is Tea in Wonderland by Three by the Sea Designs. So bright and fun. It's on their fingering weight base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Can't wait to knit socks out of that. I might start those well before summer sock camp and probably finish them before summer sock camp, but the color just made me think today it's perfect for summer sock camp. Oh, I forgot to show, I went to show earlier, when I did the scrappy socks, what I had left of each color um, that my friend Jenny had sent, I put into a magic knot ball that I'll add into my crochet granny stripe blanket. Now I did receive a few things over in the P.O. box. The first one that I received is from Melissa of Stitch Witches Market. And does she have a name for this? Let me see. It, yes, she does. It is the Rosa Supply Case. And she said she thought that I could use this for my English paper piecing. And look at the fabric. I love these cross fabrics. Love it. So inside, it is like a perfect little zippered pouch. 
open up the inside and it has two zipper compartments here and then there are little pockets here you can put things in got a string there this reminds me of a I mean I guess you would call it like a bible cover a bible case that my aunt used to have I love it. <laughs> but this is for English paper piecing and I can't wait to get my English paper piecing in here. Um, I know I'll probably be making some trips to visit family so I think this will be perfect for throwing my English paper piecing in here, taking it along with me. And then she also sent a couple little extra goodies. Let me get open here. So we have needle toppers. This fits needle sizes US 2, 2.75 millimeter and up. Two crosses. And then a needle minder. Take it out of the bag here. That says she loves Jesus and America too. Perfect. So these are all going to be going into my sewing table with all of my English paper piecing supplies. Very excited. I haven't put them up there yet because I was waiting until I showed it, but now, now they're going up there. All right. The other one, I'm not going to go through everything. Oh my goodness. A viewer was so generous and sent me a goodie box from Germany. There were so many fun treats in there so much yarn, so many good things. So I'm not going to go through all of them. Some of them have already, we've like devoured them. They were so good. There were chocolates. <laughs> and if you know me, been around for a while, I have a sweet tooth and they were very delicious, but they also sent yarn. This bag was included too, and it's so soft <laughs> and I love it. But this whole thing is full of yarn. Um, so I won't go through all of the yarn that's in here. Um, I'll show a few. They sent me some Nicole C. Mendez. This is the Celebrations colorway on her soft sock. Oh, I opened the top. Whoops. So this would be good for like an 80s, 90s theme too, wouldn't it? They also sent me some Regia, which I am so excited about. It's just one of my favorite yarns. The Arnie and Carlos design line. That one is color 03655 if anyone is interested. But yes, there's minis in here. There's full skeins. There's just so much. I was blown away by this package. Also, I have this in a Ziploc bag. They sent some alpaca yarn. I have, I'm not like crazy allergic to alpaca, but I have a bit of a sensitivity to alpaca. I get very, very itchy. Um, it's something that's kind of like built too. I used to be able to work with it and just feel a little uncomfortable, but I kind of get a little hivey <laughs> now. Um, and I don't know that I've ever really talked about that on here. I think I've mentioned it here and there, but as soon as I saw the yarn, I could see it. And I was like, that has alpaca. You can usually just tell. Um, so I carefully turned it over and saw it. Yes, it does have alpaca. And I put it in a Ziploc bag and we're actually going to use it for a giveaway. So I'm not taking it out to show just because it never fails. I'm like a child and I touch it and then I end up touching my face and then my eyes get red and itchy. So we're not going to, I'm not taking it out, <laughs> but I'm going to show it as best I can in the Ziploc bag. And there are two skeins. So this is does it say? I'm not sure what the colorway is. Let me show the tag if I can show you here. Yeah, I'm not sure what the colorway name is. I don't know if that's it right there. But there are two skeins. It's absolutely beautiful yarn and it would just make such a gorgeous, I mean, you could do a hat. You could probably do a small shawl with this. It is 72% cotton, 17% I 
virgin wool merino and 11% baby alpaca. Even just that tiny bit. I know I would be so itchy. I was already, I tried so hard not to touch it, but I did get a little itchy just from um, getting it into the bag. So I'm sadly going to have to part with this. <laughs> it's so beautiful, but I know that it will go to a loving home um, that one of you will really, really appreciate it. So we're going to do a giveaway for this. All you have to do is comment down below this video. Any comment will enter you for the giveaway. Um, if you're not sure what to comment, I know some people like to have a prompt. If you're not sure what to comment, what would you make with this? What do you think that you would use this yarn for? You don't end up having to make it. Obviously you can change your mind, but <laughs> what would you make with this? So yes, giveaway for this episode. Don't forget to comment down below. I was so blown away by that package. So many goodies. All right, I think that's it for the yarny stuffs. I think that's that's all I got. Um, reading, I'm still reading Pray for Silence, book two in the Kate Burke Holder series by Linda Castillo. And we are watching, we are still watching Survivor. We're watching that as the episodes come out. We finished Fallout, started and finished, I think since last episode. And I enjoyed that so much more than I thought I would. It's on Amazon. I'm not sure if that's the only place you can get it. I think it is an Amazon show, but it was so good. I really thought it was one of those I was going to watch and like, cause Eric wanted to watch it cause him and the boys have played the games and that it would be like, oh, okay, it was, it was all right. But no, I am shocked by how much I liked that show. So we watched that and that's kind of all we've watched, I think pretty sure that's it. Life stuff. We went to a new antique shop over the weekend. It was, what was the name of it and where was it? I'm pretty sure I still have the tag, not the tag, the like, I took a picture of a flyer to send a friend with info on the shop. There it is. Heart of Ohio Antique Center in Springfield, Ohio. We had never been there before. It was huge. I feel like we could have spent, we were there, I think for like three hours. I'm pretty sure. Two, but I feel like it was three. Um, found some goodies. Some of the stuff was a lot pricier than what we would see in antique shops around where we live. Um, and I feel like it was items we would like the same things we would see. They were just so much more expensive there. So we didn't find too much that was within our price range, but we found a couple little goodies that we brought home. I think that's kind of like the, the biggest exciting thing we did. Um, other than that, it's just been normal life stuff. Puppy's doing good. Piper's still settling in nicely. The other dogs are settling in nicely to having her around. I think that's kind of all I've got. So I hope that y'all are doing well. I hope that you enjoyed this little catch up. Um, are you excited about summer sock camp? I'm very excited. Be sure to comment down below if you want to enter in the giveaway for the alpaca blend yarn <laughs> and check out the Spreadshirt shop. Check out the Ravelry group. I'll get the chatter thread open for summer sock camp. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got. I hope y'all are doing well. I'll see you next week for another regular episode. Until then, happy making. Bye.